Hi everybody, I'm Mr. Trent from the Leonardo Museum, and this is... Hi, I'm Aubrey again. So we are here today to talk about flight and the science of flight. Many of you have ever made a paper airplane might know that sometimes they work really, really great and sometimes they just fail. Today, we wanna to talk about the science of it to see if maybe you might be able to do this a little bit better at home. But before we begin, Miss Aubrey, I have made my paper airplane, but I need you to have one too. So I have some paper here for you. Anything that you wanna make yours out of, you get a pick while I explain a little bit more about flight. I want green because it's my favorite color. Perfect. And can I just say, yes. I have never made a paper airplane before. This is literally your first paper airplane? Yeah. Okay, folks, here we go. This is science in action. <laughs> we're gonna see how her paper airplane turns out today. Now, while she's doing that, we're gonna use my little paper airplane for reference. So there are four different forces when a plane takes off that are causing it to be able to fly perfectly. So for instance, we can think of this in our cardinal directions, right? Like north, south, east, and west. So when we start thinking <laughs> about this, um, we can think about the force that's causing it to go up is lift. So when a plane is able to go fast enough, it's able to cause lift to naturally happen, putting more pressure underneath the wings, causing flight to occur. Just like we see with airplanes in real life or with birds. Now, we also have the ability to go forward. So you might see like really big propellers on the front of planes or those really big jet engines. That's causing it to want to go forward and that is called thrust. So it's thrusting itself forward. Now, I bet you all know what's causing the pull to happen, right? What is the pull that we experience? Gravity. Gravity, you're so right. So gravity's gonna be pulling our airplane down. We also know that drag is causing this to slow down. So that might be air resistance that's like actually pushing back against the plane. So we might need to thrust a little bit more. So knowing about lift and pull and drag and thrust, we can look at our paper airplane to see how it might go better. Whoa, Miss Aubrey, that is a fancy looking airplane. That looks really, really good. Should we go test them? Yes. What do, do you it. say we climb up on the top of our airplane here in the museum and, and make them fly? Okay, we can do that, but I know that people at home probably don't have an <sighs> airplane to get on top of. So I was thinking I was at my sister-in-law's the other day okay. and she has these awesome stairs that her kids like to play mm. on. So they're up on the balcony throwing off. Um, they even put a bucket at the bottom and we're trying to aim into the bucket. Oh. Or you can go outside, get a little outdoor time. <laughs> we definitely want to see people going outside. Of course, social isolating, but be really careful. If you're gonna be at the top of the stairs, be really mindful of your stance. If you're on the balcony, be really, really careful when you're out there too. That's very true. All right, okay. should we go on top of the airplane? Yes, I'm Let's ready. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> All right, Miss Harvey, are you ready? Yes. Three, two, one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Miss Aubrey, <laughs> we tested our airplanes. Yep. We were able to see just how well they worked. How did yours go? Um, not so great. It kind of <laughs> went down, around, and landed on its head. That's not, not how planes are supposed no. to work, my friends. That's not how they work. No, it wasn't great. That's okay. It did go about five feet. I was really happy with mine. Mine did glide, and it did soar about 20 feet. I'm pretty happy with that. However, I need us to know something, Miss Aubrey. Yes. Sometimes things don't work out. That's true. Is that good or bad? I think it's good. It always means either you can improve upon your design or you could even maybe find another solution that you weren't expecting. I love that. That's what engineers do, in fact. When they're trying to find solutions to problems, sometimes they come upon things that don't work. That gives us information to be able to improve things. Yep. And we have some other ideas because right now we know that your plane didn't go very far. Perhaps it might be with that design wanting it to like curve down and go upside down. Yeah, I think this is a little long. Ah, so maybe that back end is a little long. I think the air is coming under my wings, but then pushing mm. that way. And kind of bringing it back too, we know that it's not getting enough lift, right? Right. So like that lift isn't quite happening. It might also have to do with drag. The idea of it being kind of like stopped by that air and it's being pushed down instead. Yeah. So what are maybe some things that we can do? Cause we have some other materials that you kind of brought here. Right, so what do we have? I was thinking of people at home, they're kind of stuck inside, can't always head to the store. So I have a paper bag that we can use. Great idea. An old calendar page. <gasps> oh, look how pretty that is. Bringing or, a little art into it. If you're really like organizing, <laughs> you can use this side. 
That's true. <laughs> Organize, reduce, reuse, recycle, use the other side. I love that. Okay. Reduce, reuse, recycle. <laughs> Same thing with our um, newspaper. newspaper. That's perfect. And then a little tip from maybe one of my educator friends. Oh. <laughs> said that this was a really good material. Tin foil. That's a really great idea because it's really thin. It's really super lightweight, but it can also be folded in different ways to make it really reinforced. Yeah. Aubrey. Yeah. Why do we have glittery uh, pipe cleaners? Because it's glitter. It's glitter. Okay. <laughs> but what might we be able to use these for? Well, I was also kind of thinking, again, giving it a little bit more structure, making it really strong and reinforced on the mm. outside. I know when my kiddos throw their paper airplanes because... They've made them before, oh, not me, but not they yet. have. Um, after a couple crash landings, you know, they're pretty beat up. So maybe if they're a little reinforced. I like that idea. You know, when we look at our plane here, there are little structural like beams and things on the mm -hmm. inside. Perhaps that might be a really great solution. Yeah. Um, I also see like paper clips. So maybe if yours is um, not having enough weight distribution, maybe you can attach paper clips on different parts. Maybe mm. even adding more than one on the back of yours might cause it to even out. Oh, because if it's going like this, this would make it go down. Right. Oh. Have you ever been on an airplane before and they need to like move people around on that, especially if you're flying a really small airplane? Yes. That weight distribution does matter for really great flight. Oh. And we want flights to be really safe. I thought they just didn't want us to, I don't know, <laughs> be all in the same rows. I don't know. Give They're us picky. Extra leg room. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, Aubrey, do you think that you would be able to go home and make a better paper airplane based on what we've learned today? Yes. And the other thing that I think I would do is get my kiddos involved. Again, they've made paper airplanes, yeah. but now I have a few more tips and tricks for them. And then we have a staircase. We that do. we could stand on. And yep. so I don't have, you know, an airplane here like at the museum, <laughs> but I do have a staircase at home. I also have kind of a back balcony area. Mm. So as long as we're being safe, totally. I can get them out there, get them outside and maybe testing a few, put a bin at the bottom and have oh, them yeah. like try to like aim. Ooh, I don't know. I, I like that. Like a landing pad of sorts. Make it a game. And like each bin is a different color mm -hmm. with different points. I don't Ooh, know. That's a fun game. You could also do it based on individual if you don't want to have that competition aspect of seeing if you can improve mm -hmm. based on your that's own true. distance. So get a nice big long tape measure out of the tool shed and, and measure just how far your plane flies. I like that. I like that's that. awesome. Well, we've given you some ideas and we encourage you to go find other ideas out there. Find really fun patterns of paper airplanes to build and post right here onto um, the Leonardo Museum, um, like on our Facebook page, and share this with other friends and maybe give them challenges at home and see who can have the best flight. I really want to go test out my new and improved airplane. I love that. Shoot. Well, I'm Mr. Trent, and this is Aubrey, and we hope you have a really great time at home building paper airplanes. See you guys next time. Bye.